My name is Patty. I'm a photographer, videographer, yoga teacher, and now a ceramicist. I'm so grateful for the discovery of pottery. It's really something so beautiful, so tangible, full of dreams and possibility. But equally, it's full of learning, full of disappointment, full of failure, um, but through this, also full of perseverance. I'm really humbled by this craft. I actually have not studied it formally. I mean, maybe one day. But I hope and aim to continually learn. There's so many things to practice. Endless, even. <laughs> it's something that I can take and grow as the years pass. And I think that was the same with yoga teaching and the same with photography as well. I really want to keep going, and here I am. <laughs> Some sort of deja vu going on with a hobby turning into a business. It's familiar and it brings me joy. So I continue to desire creating art in various forms to firmly secure a place in this world by a legacy of radiance, of joy, of hope. And I can't wait to do that with all my heart, <laughs> with my words, my body, my movement, my art, my photography. All right, so let's talk about the whole process from start to finish. Firstly, you choose what kind of clay you'd like and to start off, would probably use standard stoneware um, and then later down the track, perhaps try more of the grittier or the softer ones. So for this process, I've used just regular standard stoneware. And the first step is to wedge the clay so there's no air bubbles. And once you've wedged your beautiful piece of clay, um, you make it into like a wee ball and then that ball goes onto the wheel. So you lift the clay up into a volcano shape and then from here, you compress the top a little bit. I always muck that step up. But I'm learning, you know? And then once you've created the volcano, the next part is pulling the walls. So you start from the bottom, and this part you kind of really have to be slow and intentional. <laughs> so you're pulling the walls up till the top. Once you have your shape that you're happy with, you can press the top one more time and you can trim the sides a little if you wish you can do that later you actually wait for a day to let it dry into a leather hard kind of feel and then once it's leather hard we trim it So once we're in the trimming phase, you can kind of create different shapes. You can etch things, you can make the foot of the cup really pretty, really shapely. Up to you. So many things can happen. So I go to a local ceramic studio called the Clay Center and we go there to, you can actually throw on the wheel there, they have a members area. And you can also drop off your stoneware to be fired, bisqued and glazed as well. So glazing just is so full of freedom. You can <laughs> just dip it in clear glaze if you want. but. 
In terms of glazing, the first step is waxing the bottom. Waxing the bottom of your cup or bowl is essential. Once you've waxed them, you wait a little bit for it to dry, and then the world is your oyster. You can just glaze it however way you want. So sometimes I have brushable glazes, so I just paint them on, and then sometimes I half paint, and sometimes I half dip the thing in this big pot of glaze. all of the beautiful wee vessels. I sell them online in a shop. Do I say the name of the shop? Patty <laughs> Patty <in places> .com. Woo! <laughs>